Like all the water. Yeah. It's like keto okay. liquor. Uh-huh. In 10 different places. Okay, the uh, first order of business is the minutes. Okay, uh, are there any corrections? Bill? Uh, one second. So there's the correction um, on the group health insurance. Um, the total uh, request for 2017, uh, the new actual number that I have is um, 15,875,564. And that's a result of the uh, change in the line 5190 offset for group health insurance difference of 19,178. So it actually brings down the, uh, the total request by that amount to 15,875. 15 million. I'm sorry, 15,875, thanks. 564. That, that shouldn't be a correction to the East minute, should it? I'm sorry? <coughs> this was the number as of Monday, <coughs> but in the minute. Well, right. you're right. On, so on Monday it said health insurance footed 18,974. So that's correct. But I think the point I was trying to make is that's not a correct number. So okay. So I'm sorry. Are you saying that the voted number is correct? No, it's not, it's not correct. It's not correct. It's not correct. We either need to revote it or you do an administrative change. I go with the according to the common rules. It's not correct anymore. I think we need another half hour of discussion. How much is it all? Not much. Twenty grand. Administrative. In our favor. Administrative. Okay, so what is the correct number? The correct number for group health insurance for the 2017 request is 158 million. Seven hundred fifteen million. No. Fifteen. I'm 15 sorry. Million. It's been a long day, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're bankrupt. Fifteen million, eight hundred seventy-five thousand five sixty-four. The Minuteman School. Okay, so that's different than what we actually voted. That's correct. Yeah, remember we had a dis- uh, difference of opinion of what the health insurance was for right. Rec- the offsets. Right. Rec and Rink and Sewer Water and Sewer. So we figured that out. <coughs> so. The so so, um, so this number actually <coughs> was correct that we have, that's down here that Peter had. Yeah. What we need to do is take a vote. <coughs> I mean, that's what we do. Or you could just <coughs> correct it. I'd like to have it in the minutes because the last thing I do is I check all the numbers against what's in the minutes. So I'd like to do something that will get it into the minutes. Okay, well, why don't we see if we can do both at the same time? Uh, <laughs> Hmm. I'm not sure if this is technically correct. Uh, okay, so Mary Margaret, are your votes that you did correct? Yes. So you had the correct numbers, the health, the other one did not. Right, but also I think there was a water and sewer change too. Did, did Sandy yeah. call? Okay, why don't we do it this way then and see if we can. <laughs> um, do I have a motion? to revise the health insurance budget to 15 million 875,564. So moved. Second. Second, okay. So, uh, are there any questions on this? Okay, so actually we're revising our vote. All those in favor, please say aye. <coughs> aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, so Peter, uh, why don't you put in these minutes here just a foot or just a parenthesis corrected on 3:30:28, and then in the minutes today that you take today, mo- note the revote. Okay, does that do it? Well, one more thing. Okay. Um, 
because uh, because Sandy did revise that number, it also affects the uh, change. So the percent change in the minutes is 3.45%, and the correct increase would be 3.32%. Okay. So it's actually the, because I have like a couple of different copies of that budget. <laughs> of what, the group health budget? Rip yeah, all the, the ones except the correct one. So I have a big X through this one, which is how I scientifically keep track of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to remove yes. my X. So it's 15 million, 875, 564, 3.3, 3. this is 3%. Correct. That should be correct. Okay, everybody clear on that? So that way we'll have the corrected number both as a sort of a parentheses in, yesterday, in the Monday minutes and as a motion in this minutes. Okay. So it's, it's done. Okay, are there any other corrections? How about water and sewer? Is there some more problem there? Well, yeah, uh, I guess so, because the numbers we used off of the budget were based on Sandy's revised numbers, yeah. I think those numbers are correct. They're not. They're not. So okay, never mind. I, 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 Bill, are you saying the water and sewer number was correct? No, I think Mer Mer yeah, well, I, Sandy was saying when I was speaking with him, he was saying that, I can't remember exactly what he was saying about the water and sewer offsets because I was only concerned about rec and rink, but he thought, I thought he said he was going to contact you. He did. Oh, and okay. He revised the budget. Oh, okay. And it's different than the one that that was, used to be presented under, I think it affected rec and rink. Um, the total, if the total amount of the health insurance offsets then um, changes, then the contribution from water and sewer changes. No, we need to know which one we're going to use. It's either version A or version B. Sandy is a different Well, we have to use the correct version. Right. Well, that's the one we should use. <laughs> okay, so. So, the, do you want, I have the numbers for rec and rank. The ones I presented were correct. Yes. Okay, the health insurance. So, well, I don't know about the rest. <laughs> well, then the, the yeah. water and sewer is correct. It's the health insurance that isn't, so. Okay, so the health insurance and water and sewer uh, is 576-828. That is not correct. I believe I brought this adjustment. Um, 576, 829 or 828? 576, 828. Uh, okay. And that's what we voted. Is that the yep. correct number? Yeah. Yes. Well, according to Sandy's memo, yeah. It is a consistent number. <laughs> yes. <Good>. Consistent number. <coughs> but you said it wasn't correct. No, we have, that's the new, that's the correct. <coughs> it went back to that's the original option. This is, this is as of Monday. Who knows what's correct? That's what the issue is, is that it's a matter of timing. We got one budget that's changed. Right. Well, it, it could be that it, it, you know, there was a mistake made on the other two, right. he but not, not on this one. When Bill? he did this one, he did not put in the correct what rec and rank insurance. When he um, did this what number page, did he just give you? but he said the final number to, was correct. That's all I can tell you is what he said. I didn't do the math. I only cared about Rec and Rink. When I emailed you, and Rec and Rink, as I presented it on Monday, no, no, was he, the correct he number. Was the correct number. Monday yeah. with correct right. numbers. And I, I did the same Revised thing for health insurance. I took the new Tuesday, number that Sandy uh, sent out last night. Right, that's okay. And I uh, changed that to that number from what what it had been for the offset. And that offset affected obviously the bottom line. Right. It, it, it seems like we just simply have a timing issue because right. everybody, so everybody had issued on their presentation new budgets, not the budgets that were in the book, right? So it seemed like it looked like the last budget was just catching up to the first yeah. three because Mary Margaret had the two new the rink in here, rec it's budget, Grant had the water and sewer now. We're tying it up with the with the actual health insurance, so that's okay. why I think they're not so going to go back. The, the, the uh, rank and the recreation are correct because that's how we voted. Yes, we corrected yes, the 
health insurance budget. And now we just need to know, is the water and sewer budget uh, 576-828 health insurance correct? Let me look at the revised budget that we have. Okay, tell you what, uh, we've got people waiting. Uh, why don't you see if we can find this out and we'll come back to it. Uh, I, have, I have an email from Sandy that says this is the final underlying change and he's got a total of 575-602. 575-602. Well, give that number, number to Grant, and he can play with it and make sure we have it. Are there any other corrections on the minutes? This is not the, the one we just looked at, right? Yeah. Excuse me. Are there any other corrections on the minutes? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Okay. Seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? This okay. is for last night. Oh, that's one. Wow. That's different than what we approved. Okay. Uh, all right, the delay, folks. These things always seem to happen at the last minute. Uh, Corset, would you take the mic and make your presentation? Absolutely. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm Corset Rowe, and with me are the other, well, there should be eight members, but Mike Kerr had a previous engagement. And I'd like them to introduce themselves to you, and then I'll go through the presentation. Hi, I'm Eric Helmuth, Vice Chair of the CPAC, and Selectman of Blinky. Hi, I'm David Levy, I'm a Selectman of Blinky. Leslie Mayer, Health and Recreation Commission of Blinky. Jordan Robinson, Historical Commission Conservation Commission appointee. Richard Murray, the Alton Housing Authority designee. Andrew Mason, select for the And you will find all of the resumes for the committee at the back of what we've given you today. And if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves to us, I know most of you. Um, and for the new members, I'm Clarissa Rowe, I'm chair of the committee. Um, and it, if you wouldn't mind, so people can find out who you are. We've met before. <laughs> Peter, why don't you start? Please, Howard. Tom? Uh, the, oh, Tom, it's Jack of Hours, Precinct 11. Uh, Daryl Harmer, Precinct 12. Bill Keller, Precinct 16. Brian Beck, Precinct 9. Paul Bayer, Precinct 13. Grant Gibbion, Precinct 19. Dean Carmen, Precinct 20. Alan Jones, Precinct 14. Mary Margaret Frank Lamont, Precinct 5. Dave McKenna, Precinct 21. Gina Russell, Precinct 4. Shannon, <coughs> Precinct 15. Great. Well, thank you very much. Um, we appreciate the time. What I'm going to do tonight is introduce um, where we stand um, with the money that we're getting and a brief overview of the Community Preservation Act for those of you that haven't are not familiar with it. And then we'll introduce the projects. I think what I'll do after the first introduction, I'll see if you have any questions, we'll introduce the five projects that we're bringing forward and we will stop after each project to see if you have questions. Um, people will answer questions, and we have Kathy Garnett from the Conservation Commission as well um, to answer questions. And then at the end, we're going to do the administrative expenses that Eric Helma um, will speak to. I would like to thank Eric Helma because after our Monday night presentation, um, one of your good members sit seated in front of me told us what we should be doing for our presentation tonight. And I don't think that Eric has eaten since then. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's any, if you have any praise, keep it on Eric. Um, the reason that we're here tonight is when the Community Preservation Committee was formed, there was, as part of the bylaw, a request that we consult with the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, and the Capital Planning Committee, and actually the Council on Aging. Um, about our budget and our project recommendations. 
we have yet to, to vote on our projects, and uh, we plan to do so tonight after we talk to you and get your reactions to form things. This has been a very um, special year, shall we say. Um, frankly, we don't want to repeat it because we were really just appointed in October. We started working in mid-November. There were no application processes in place. We had to write a plan. We didn't get the projects until the end of February, and here we are at the end of March, having decided on five projects. Nine were submitted, but um, five of the ones that you're, we'll talk about tonight are going to town meeting. As you know, town meeting is the one that decides whether these projects will go forward or not. Um, we are really proud of the care that we have taken in this process, this very hurried process. Mm -hmm. We've had high standards um, that have been met by the five projects that you're going to see in front of you, and we have um, had a variety of public meetings. We plan to do more so next year. Most importantly, the nine members of this committee take their responsibility as fiscal agents for this town money very seriously. It's terribly important to us that we really vet these projects, and we have, and we're um, happy to present them to you. The basics of the Community Preservation Act are threefold. There are three uses. They tend to be uses that are not traditionally funded by municipal um, finance. They are um, historic preservation, open space and recreation, which Arlington does a wonderful job of funding, and affordable housing, which we also do a pretty good job on. Um, we have a great housing um, authority, and we also have the Housing Corporation of Arlington. So what we have to do, and if you go to the chart, which is um, a couple plate pages beyond, Every year we need to spend 10% of the money that we take in on housing, 10% on open space and recreation, and 10% on um, historic um, preservation <coughs> projects. The rest, the 65 to 67%, uh, is flexible and it can be spent in the way that the committee proposes and is accepted by town meeting. If we go back then to the the page that says the work of the CPA committee. I won't read through what we've done. I've sort of said it already, but um, we are about halfway through the process. We still have to go to town meeting, and then, we, like the CBDG funds, we'll be monitoring these five projects if they're approved. So we're, um, we're still very new at this, but this is the way that, that we plan to be working. Um, you can see on the next page how CPA projects happen. Um, they're initially submitted to the Community Preservation Committee. We then look at them and see if they will, really will work for um, the law, the Community Preservation Act law, which is very strict when it was written. One of the things that was um, one of the initial writers of the law, Marion Walsh, wanted to make sure was that it wasn't a funnel for the maintenance needs. And that's one of the reasons there's an awful lot of very, to us, somewhat arcane um, requirements. And then we will ask the projects to give us more detail. So we, we got nine to begin with. We're coming with five because some of the other projects were not ready for um, presentation to town meeting. What we do then is we go to town meeting, and you'll see on the right-hand side what town meeting can do with the projects. They can approve the recommendations. They can reject the recommendations. They can reduce the amount of money that's spent. And they can, um, the, the last one, the reserve account recommended, is something that's almost never used. But they can't raise the amount of money. So if we say we're going to spend $636,000 on Robbins Farm Park, they can't say you really need to spay, spend $800,000. So that's the way the law is written, and that's the way we plan to use it. We, we, um, we'll we have been working with Doug Heim 
and we'll be working more carefully with him as soon as we're ta we've taken our vote. And then if you go to this project, the projected revenues for CPA in 2017, that's what we'll be recommending to town meeting. One of the, the quirks about CPA is the local match that we have been raising in Arlington in the first year, which is about $1.3 million, cannot be spent. Um, and in fact, the, the recommendations that we're making to town meeting are of 2017 money. So there's about a $1.3 million amount of money that cannot be spent until the books close in the summer. It will then be added to the next fiscal year. It's, um, it's just the way the law is written. It was kind of a surprise. So we have had absolutely no money to spend on any um, of the work that we've done thus far. And we'll get into the um, administrative reserves later. What, we, um, what I want you to see is that, as I said, um, the town of Arlington receipts is the one, one million three hundred and sixty-four thousand. Uh, we seem to have a little <laughs> more money. It's one point three mo um, million dollars. What I do every month is talk to Mike Morris, or he'll send me an email spreadsheet of what has come in. Um, and what the balances are. In the third quarter of this year is when the um, abatements happened. And so some of the money, the abatements are happening now. So we're making a conservative um, estimate of how much money there will be coming from the local receipts. Um, again, this is a matching program. Uh, we do get a state match. At the moment, it is um, estimated by the Department of Revenue in March as being a 19% match. So that's what the $247,000 figure is. It will really be determined in November, next November. And we already know that the governor has put an additional $10 million into the fund in his budget but because we never know what's going to happen on Beacon Hill, we have not estimated that as part of our match. And in fact, D DOR doesn't um, ask that we don't do that. So what we'll be going to town meeting with is that figure, the $1547,000 figure. <clears throat> then on the next page is the um, project page with the amounts of money that are um, attach for each project and I will go through them briefly just the money part um, Robbins Farm Park as you know was in the capital plan we're going to be funding that the spy fund edge was not in the capital plan it brings tremendous benefits not only to this one project but we believe to the entire edge of spy fund park um, the Kimball Farmer House is one part of, um, I think, how much total money is it, David? 1.4 million that will get those three units up and moving. And the Arlington Housing Authority, the Drake Village windows that will be funding the $200,000 is leveraging state funds of $1.4 million. And Richard, do you want to get up and talk about your, the meeting today? About Can you yeah. hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, actually, John Griffin, the executive director of the Arlington Housing Authority, met with, uh, I believe it was DHCD and the architects there. And they are, DHCD, I guess, is in particular thrilled over the potential opportunity of this $200,000 coming. So, just want to read it. So, what a great, great idea this is. Um, and the, I believe there's 150000 coming from. CBDG um, this year to leverage that money. And then we have the stabilization of the Whittemore Robbins Carriage House. So those are the five projects. Uh, the next page you can see the, the revenue and expenditures and reserves that we have. 
Um, and the lower part, the 94,000 and the 77,000, Eric will talk about later. Um, and then um, we have a map of where the five projects are, are. And luckily for us, they're all over town. And I think that that's, that's the way it should be. I know that um, Parks and Recreation and everybody, all the um, committees try to make sure that the money is spent all over town, but this has worked out particularly well. Um, before I get into the projects, are there any questions that you want to ask on what I've already presented? Yes. Uh, here. On Melissa, on your page. I know, we don't have page numbers. Um, the revenue page, determined in, concerning the state match, determined it says in 2017. Is that supposed to be 2016? Yeah. Yes. Was it fiscal or calendar? Right. Fiscal 17 and calendar 16. Fiscal 17, but calendar 17. Well, Department calendar of Revenue seven. actually does it, just did it this month to t determine what the match should be for the communities. So it's in the actually 16. So it probably should say March 2016. So you raised the money one year and Yes, but we're actually spending next year's money at town meeting. So this, this first year is an odd year. I don't know why it was written this way, and it was kind of a surprise. Um, but so the money, unless we have a special town meeting in the fall, the fiscal 2016 money won't be spent until fiscal 2018. We can, yeah. It's, it's, it's very odd. That's the way the law works. Yeah, only for the first year. And then it's, then it's the normal. Yes, this is the money, the $1,547,000 $1, is actually next year's income that we will be designating in town meeting. Uh, well, we will spend money next year. But the effect of that would be is that 2018, we will have a uh, town meeting. We'll have the opportunity to, to spend the local collections from fiscal 2016 plus anticipated. Right. Um, so it'll be it'll, it'll be the one year where it's where it's it's double because we had one year where it's none, uh, and, and thereafter it'll just be one year at a time. Our, our town meeting is in the spring, and so it needed to be approved before the tax rate is set. Right. So we didn't get the time. So next year, you're going to, next year in fiscal 17, you'll be spending fiscal 17 revenues. Correct. And the money received in fiscal 16 is held over and actually gets spent in fiscal 18 together with the fiscal 18 revenues. Right. Okay. Uh, <coughs> are there any other questions, Carol? Okay, um, I would love to get it. Shall we, why don't we take that one first? Um, one of the things that happens in the, because we have a two-step procedure for applications. The, the um, Arlington Housing Corporation's, Arlington Housing Authority's project came in and it was for both a life and skill center and for Drake Village. Windows. The way the Community Preservation Act law is written, we can't be providing funds for the Life and Skill Center. So we had, I know, I mean, you could rewrite the law if you like. <laughs> but we can provide um, funds for fixing the envelope of a building. And fixing the envelope might mean the roof, it might mean the leaky windows. So you've got some really beautiful pictures of leaky windows. 
And that's, that part of it we could, um, we could fund. CBDG can fund the whole thing. So that's what we have been doing with the Housing Authority and with the Planning Department is working hand in hand to <coughs> come up with something that we can fund so that they can get the DHCD funding. And this is um, $200,000, we'll put it in the affordable housing um, category. Did you want to say something there? Yeah, um, just, just for a little more detail, if you're interested in the policy that informs that little quirk as to why we can do the windows. Uh, we can do the windows because they're threatening the integrity of the building. We couldn't do the windows if they're just uncomfortable. Um, and the reason for that is in the back of your um, packet is this grid that we sort of have been encouraged to live and die by. It's the VOR interpretation of the law because that's their, their charge to do so. And you can see in the grid under community housing that we can do preservation, but we can't do rehabilitation and restoration unless that housing asset was acquired in the CPA. Uh, so in this case, uh, the windows uh, is falling under preservation, and there actually has been a DOR uh, written uh, opinion um, along with actions DHCD actually that, that, that opine that you can, you know, things that protect the, the real property and preserve the real property are eligible. Um, so you can do things for the building but not for the inhabitants in short. Okay, Peter. Uh, another question like the previous one. Um, on the recommended projects at the top of the page it says recommended projects for FY17. But if I understand what you said earlier, that should say FY18? No. It's it's FY17. We are The so money we can be spent in FY17? Yes, the money will be spent. And that's one of the things that we can talk about as we go through each one is what the, the schedule is. And the idea is that you have to have a schedule, you have to have um, very thorough cost estimates, and you have to have um, <coughs> an idea of, you know, our funding, we would like our funding to happen in a yearly cycle. Um, we, we, I'm hoping to use some of the CBDG reporting mechanisms so that we don't have to invent reinvent the wheel because I think that that would be a good way. So in a year's time we can be coming to you and saying of the $1.5, uh, dollars that we appropriated if it's approved in town meeting this is where the funding stands. And we'll have a spreadsheet to follow the, to track the projects. FY17 starts this July. Correct. July 1st. So these projects can start sometime after that. Right. And not before that. But not before. Right. And one of the things that we were trying to do with the Kimball Farmer House, for instance, is we want to make sure that the certificate of occupancy happens after July 1st. <coughs> so, um, you know, we can't really incur expenses in advance of that. We have to incur them afterwards. Okay. okay. Now, let, why don't we do the spy pond first? Um, the Spy Pond Project Edge Protection and Erosion Control Project is a project of the Conservation Commission, and it is a study for. Oh, sorry. Uh, 49760. Um, it's a wonderful idea. There's a lot of erosion in Spy Pond. Now, this is not the Spy Pond Park project that was just done by the Park and Recreation <coughs> Department. This is a natural processes um, study that will be done by Chester Engineering and overseen by the, the Conservation Commission and the Community Preservation Committee. Um, and you can see what, what the goals of the project are. And it's really a water quality project. One of the things that happened during the um, Massachusetts Avenue reconstruction in East Arlington, <coughs> the protection of the catch basins to make sure that there wasn't anything going into Spy Pond actually kept the water from draining well. And so there was a lot of overland drainage that went down the streets and into the pond. So it's been more polluted than usual. One of the things that you do um, on a regular basis is authorize the amount of money for the treatment of invasive species in Spy Pond. This is a water quality um, 
project as well and a habitat project, but it's mostly to be looking at the edge protection along Spy Pond and um, figuring out where the erosion is, where the accretion is, and it's a very, there's a very good um, bioengineering company that will be doing the work and it will be overseen by this woman on my right and the man right behind me. Um, Kathy Garnett is a registered landscape architect who thought she was retired. <laughs> <laughs> Have I left anything out? Yeah, summed it up really good. The uh, Conservation Commission uh, is trying to strike a balance between the ecosystem and the use of that pond, which is going up every year. And what's um, we noticed, but maybe no one who's been on the uh, Spy Pond Park has noticed that there, the edge is eroding away and chunks of soil is dropping into the into Spy Pond and, and that's deteriorating the water quality, which brings everything else down. So our, our project is to come up with some ideas to, to stop this in the future and to um, make sure that we keep that balance between uh, recreational use and the ecosystem and habitat and place at Spy Pond. Sure. Okay. 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 Because they're publicly owned parcels, so that's the only ones that we can spend money on, but we're hoping to have an educational component so that what we learn and do could be done by homeowners around the town. Um, last month, I think it was, you came before us to tell us about some serious problems in the planet. Do you anticipate, or do you feel that in the future it would be appropriate use for CPA funds for the planet? From the planet park, yes, I can. I can see that happening in some sense. Um, there, that study, I, if it um, goes through town meeting, will identify. Um, some actions that can take place, and, and using that chart, we can see what can be, uh, you know, how CPA can, uh, can fund some of those projects. But the study is already happening, so then it's, right. it's down to doing work and a restoration project on, um, you know, on such such a. So if if it's uh, it's recreation and open space, and if you don't purchase the open space with CPA money, you can't use the funds on it. So we're really going to have to look at this and find out what, what's there and what we can do um, for that project. Once. So explain again why it would be appropriate to use CPA funding for Spy Pond, but maybe not for the plan. This phase, this phase one of Spy Pond, is just a study. And a study is appropriate under CPA, under open space. Um, <clears throat> so the so the the what was the ten thousand dollars that Wi-Fi requested could have been paid through CPA funds. Could have been. Do you know whether that was considered? Whether it was considered bringing it? No, because it was. Um, I think it was uh, that committee and that process was brought along just a few months before the CPA committee was uh, put in place and finalized and we were still waiting and we didn't want to miss an opportunity to move forward with that very important project. One of the things that we found actually is that there are a lot of parts of the town that don't understand what CPA is and after town meeting when there's an department head meeting um, I've asked to come and talk to all the department heads in town so that they know exactly what, how they can apply for funds. Christine Bongiorno was the only town person who immediately turned up at the first public meeting and said, we, we would like to do this. And she's been great. I mean, I, why health and human services is the first in line, I don't know. But um, maybe if you look at the building, you'll know why. <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm just a little confused. You can you can spend CPA money to do a study, but you said you, you can't spend CPA money for the for the work. So if you're thinking, so you might be thinking, hey, this is water, and, and so is that study we're thinking about, but it's not really similar. What's Spy Pond is a recreational area, and the uh, the Lennon Park is a stormwater detention basin that supposedly should be maintained by the 
tap. We can't do town work with CPA money. So I don't know what's coming out of that um, that study, but if there's something available to be funded through CPA, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, Spy Pond is a, a great pond, and it's a public space, and, it, and, it's, and it's open space, so that's why it works. But Some of the you can, you can protect you can protect the shoreline from future damage, yeah. but you can't maintain it. So the maintenance activity, any maintenance activity, whether it's open space or recreation land, is still the responsibility of the town. You can't be funded by CPA. But you can protect and, and keep that asset from deteriorating further. Okay, so if the study came out and said, that that water area of Spy Pond, of uh, the Clinton Park really needs to be detoured uh, in, a, in a different configuration. That could involve construction, which might be out. Potential, potential. Okay, but if it's if it's just to maintain it, you can't. So, like maintain it as in dredge it. That's probably something that would be considered maintenance. Of Probably. But one of the reasons we hired a firm like uh, Chester Engineering when we met with the DPW with some of the you know, CPA money and guys and some of the other projects can be used to match some state grant money. And Chester Engineer was going to work with us to identify other sources of funding that could fund things like that. And you always have a better chance of getting funding if you have some cash. So uh, just like in the this project, we'll, our engineers and, and our committee will look at what, how, where are the problems fall and how they could be <coughs> trying to identify some secret projects that could be used as a Okay. Uh, okay, the next project is, is the Kimball Farmer House. Um, you probably have seen this house on the corner of uh, Pierce and Madden. And um, it falls into the category of affordable housing. It's being done by the Housing Corporation of Arlington. And the amount requested was $200,000. This is actually an affordable housing project and historic preservation project. The old farmer, um, Kimball Farmer House, was, belonged to the, um, the Cutter family descendants and has been um, sitting in Massachusetts, in, um, on Massachusetts Avenue since um, 1826. It's on the, um, it's one of the, um, how much is it registered? Is it a national? It's a national registered um, building and it's also on the um, state, state list. Register. Yeah. Um, and what we <coughs> have done is estimated we have, um, a cost estimate from them about the finish. It's basically finishing up the work. It's a lot of the exterior work that qualifies under historic preservation. There will be three um, units of affordable housing, and it's <coughs> through all of its um, its zoning. And um, Damien, you want to say anything else? Uh, sure. So. Uh as the person was saying, three units will be created, two one-bedrooms and one two-bedroom unit, all rentals, which will be owned and managed by the Housing Corporation of Arlington. Um, <coughs> and uh, let's see, what else can we say? Um, it's a $1.4 million project, as we said, 200000 of which is being funded by CPA. And the building will be restored per the um, Department of Interior standards. It's pretty straightforward. But. So that uh, probably count as a uh, uh, affordable housing. Yes. Under the yes. That's right. It'll be yes. those three units will go on the subsidized housing inventory. Any questions, Dean? When CPA money is used on non-governmental assets, does this have a company with any type of 
I guess I'd call it deep restriction. I mean, yes. I think that's like I just made that term. No, no, no. But you're completely right, yeah. and it and it does have a deep restriction. Yeah, it's in perpetuity. Well, it has to be deeded for the one perpetuity. And the historic preservation ones have to have a um, historic preservation restriction on on the property. What is a non? Wait, but it's non-governmental. I mean, right. like I would assume it's a different process if it's a town asset already. Right. Okay, so by them accepting this money, they're sort of committing themselves to keeping this as affordable housing. Yes. yes. Forever. Really? Right. Okay. Correct. Then or, some, or they have to return the money. Yeah, or they can return the money. Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, Whittemore Robbins Carriage House. Um, this is, you can see that wonderful yellow carriage house. It's um, a little bit behind the Whittemore Robbins house. It is currently used for storage. This is a rehabil re rehabilitation project. It, again, when you talked about preserving the envelope of the building, that's what this project is essentially using. The use that is envisioned now is continuation of the storage. Now, there are many conversations about other uses but this project is not going to build out that space. It's going to protect it from falling down. And um, if, in fact, there's another use that happens, they would have, we would have to come back and whoever was going to use it is going to have to have a build out space. But this is working on the foundations. This is working on the, um, the framing, inside mold, um, all sorts of things. This is going to be overseen by the Health and Human Services and the Arlington um, Historical Commission. You might ask why the Health and Human Services is involved in a construction project. Um, we did. Um, I think Christine Bongiorno has a lot to do with that, um, overseeing construction. Um, the amount of money that they asked for at the beginning was too little, and we made them, I think they're there are at least three layers of contingency in there and a lot of oversight that's come um, into the project because of our concern that this town entity that really doesn't do construction is in charge. And we have, um, there's a structural engineer that went um, and did an analysis that we've reviewed and is available for anybody that wants to see it, um, that talked about what actually needed to be done. He did a cost estimate. We have um, not only the overseers that we've just talked about, but we also have architects and structural engineers that will oversee the work. Anything else, Joanne? No, I mean, I think you probably all know a little bit about the, uh, the generosity of Robin's sisters and the historical So um, this building was uh, an original part of the Robin District. In all of these projects, we have letters of support that are just wonderful to read if in your spare time after ten, town meeting when you're putting your feet up and you want to read some of the letters of support. Um, the ones for Spy Pond, the Spy Pond project, I think, are particularly wonderful, and as is the the history of this particular building. The Robin sisters would drive their car into the carriage house and there was a what I call a turnstile and it would go around and then they, they could drive their car out again. Which is yeah. uh, they didn't have to turn it, they just put it on the turnstile. Unfortunately we think it's been filled in with concrete. Any questions on this one? Okay. Okay, Robins Farm, uh, Robins Farm Park Field and ADA renovation. Um, the Park and Recreation Commission has done wonderful work. This is the second phase of a two-phase project, and it's doing the playing fields and um, the community gardens. Or that group are getting some money to redo. 
some of the fence work and the paths in the community garden, which is just south of the current playground. The playground and the slide were the first phase of work, and this is more the, the playing fields up the hill. Um, they're also going to be putting in uh, a historic landmark, which is the building of the old um, Robbins Farm building, um, sort of granite blocks to make it look like the foundation. There is a bronze dog that will be recreated. We will not pay for the bronze dog because it's it's fake history. Um, and we can't pay for fake history. Um, this is a great project. It's going to be run by the Parks and Recreation Commission, as they, they do all of their projects very well. They're going to be doing design, and um, Leslie, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Um, well, it's a project that, um, as you probably know, is in the capital plan. So this will come out of the capital plan with the support of the town meeting and the CPA. Um, we had a study to assess all of the properties in town as to their, um, whether they meet ADA requirements or not. And uh, what we're going to be doing is incorporating the uh, recommendations to ensure that the site at Robbins Farm is accessible. And that's kind of the foundation for why we're helping the friends with the site work uh, to put in the the dog and the markers for the mansion. They, they were, that's the project that they're running and they were paying for, um, but the commission wants to ensure that that is um, an accessible installation. And since we're doing a field and it's uh, very close to the field, um, we're providing assistance with the site work for that. And then uh, the gardeners uh, will be doing their own uh, work, they're going to contribute to volunteer labor, and we're only contributing the materials for that project. <coughs> Questions? Carolyn? Just a comment since I grew up in the park. Um, it's great to see that you're restoring the frame, the, the foundation. I've actually played on that as a kid. Um, my concern about fixing the fields is that you don't um, decrease the safety of the kids who are sledding. So just watch if that's impacted, make sure that's not affected. Um, and, and I am a little concerned as a current resident of East Arlington to see the wealthier people in town buy their own statue when we can't even have 15,000 for art in East Arlington. For the record. We are restoring Magnolia Park this year. That's uh, the current project. So this is, this is we're trying, we do try to spread the wealth around town. That's, that's actually a comment to the Finance Committee. And <laughs> you'll be glad to know that the chair of the, um, this committee lives in East Arlington. She'll be watching. <laughs> of course, she's lived in every part of town. But, um, and I want to just say one thing. Andrew Bankston is not talking, but... He's a very instrumental, he's an architect, and he has been really, really helpful in this process. And Chuck, even though he's a conservation agent, also happens to be a builder. So um, their contribution to the financial um, evaluation of projects has been tremendously important. So that's it for me, and now I'm gonna give this guy the next section. Thank you. So Clarissa asked me to talk about uh, a couple of reserves that we're going to ask the uh, town meeting to, to do. Uh, the first one I'll just briefly mention, if you go back to the uh, budget, you'll see the budget statement that shows the ins and the outs. Um, you'll see these listed, um, and I apologize for not being engaged in this. Uh, under, under the expenditures and reserves, Revenue, reserve and expenses. There's two line items. There's a CPA budget and reserve account for $94,335. <coughs> and that's, that's money that's project money that's just not appropriated, so we save it. And the reason, it's not mandatory to create this reserve, the budget reserve, but it's advisable because that preserves our access to it uh, throughout fiscal year 2017. So if we have a, if something comes up and uh, we have a special town meeting, to be able to appropriate it, we get to get at that money instead of waiting for the next.
that's weird. So that's the, that's the simpler, simpler one. And then the administrative expenses reserve account, 77350. I'll now flip back to my, my page on that. So there are restrictions that we have been learning and will probably continue to learn on what the CPA revenues can be spent on because of the cost of implementing and operating the CPA. Some of those have not been um, nice surprises. Uh, but we rolled those punches. Uh, there are there is a way through the administrative uh, expenses that uh, that is controlled by this committee to as much as is possible legally within the law spare the town budget for expenses that are incurred by the committee's operation, by the process of processing applications, of vetting them, and presenting them to town meeting. And that's what uh, this, this reserve uh, fund can be used for. So the opportunity is to ask town meeting to reserve up, up to 5% of the estimated revenues coming in for the fiscal year, which is where the 77,350 figure comes from. There's not a financial downside, assuming you don't need the money for projects. Uh, there's no financial downside for doing so because any of that money that we don't use for qualified administrative expenses goes back into the general CPA fund for projects for future years. We don't get to, we don't, that does not accrue from year to year. It does, does not carry forward. So that fund can pay for some specific things, but the, the benefit that will uh, particularly interest finance committee is we don't know what kind of CPA proposals are going to come through the door next year. There may be some really interesting opportunities that require some very expensive due diligence. It could be legal work um, to investigate whether or not this is eligible or, or it is what people say it is. It could be environmental studies, it could be surveys um, of the land. And we are allowed to use CPA administrative money instead of town budget money uh, to, to vet those projects up to the point that we recommend in the town meeting. If there are, um, there's a need, as Dean was, was saying uh, earlier, there's a need to do legal work to ensure uh, to drop a grant agreement that a private entity will, will agree to a grant agreement that will uh, enforce some of the requirements for granting the private entity. But for the town side, instead of having to ask the town council to absorb that time and therefore that cost, that we can hire a lawyer and Supervision um, or committee and town council to do that. That she uh, yeah, 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 right. Uh, so, whatever possible, uh, that the uh, intent of this is to protect the uh, town budget from CPA committee expenses when it's possible. So, the next page, what can we use it for? Uh, we can use it for professional help, as I just mentioned. Uh, it's part of the process of uh, uh, not only receiving, processing, evaluating, vetting, and recommending projects but also in the community preservation planning process. Every year we are required to hold a, a public meeting with a real planning process and a real listening to priorities and needs. And um, we could use that money to, if we need to, to hire uh, someone to conduct part of that process for us or conduct the meeting if we feel we don't have the expertise. Again, instead of asking someone from the town side to do that and to spend that resource. Um, a small item, about $4,300, is paying um, dues to the statewide community preservation coalition, which is probably the best deal on the page because of the multitude of technical assistance available uh, to the town and to the committee um, that they provide. We've gotten it free the first year because they know we don't have the money to spend thanks to that weird first year process. We can apply the money um, if needed for administrative assistance for the CPA committee itself. Because we haven't been through a full year, we frankly don't know how much administrative help we're going to need. Our intent is to be conservative with that uh, because we want to use as much CPA money as we can on projects. Uh, we, we very generously had a donation from the town manager of, of Eve Margolis' this time, and she's been fantastic. Uh, but that was the understanding that that was because we were poor and we had no money to spend. So uh, to the extent that that is uh, necessary for committee administration, uh, we may look at some ways to, to get a few hours there. She's been tracking her time since yeah. the beginning. Yeah, she has. Yeah, so we have some, some hours on that. 
Um, as I mentioned, we can do due diligence and vetting projects um, and some smaller expenses, but you know, why not pay for those out of, out of the CPA since they're CPA incurred? Public outreach, um, communications, even this report, uh, the reports that we're gonna be mailing to town meeting can be duplicated um, under the every penny counts model of fiscal management. Um, again, can come out of the CPA kitty if we have that reserve fund for the, for the committee. Um, just a final thing with, with town meeting that the, um, the reserve account for the budget of reserve is a transfer from, from the funds. This is actually an appropriation because the committee is the only body that can spend that money. Oh. Okay, so let's say you figure that you need, and I'm picking numbers out of the year, $5,000 for administrative help over the course of a normal, a normal year. Um, does this, and the town manager decides that he can assign a member of his staff to do that. Can then we get that money as an offset to his budget? If, if the person was working part time and then had the CPA responsibilities added to the, his or her scope, we could pay that difference to make it full time. And um, what we can't do is supplant an existing amount of money, like CBDG pays for a lot of our planning staff. CPA can only pay for a new person or a new component of somebody that's been part-time. This has been a real bugaboo for Adam and me. We were, at one point were talking before Jenny Raid came of trying to, because the CBDG administrator left, we thought, great, we'll have a person that does CBDG and CPA, and it's a new hire, so we could have some of the administrative budget go for that. When Jenny came, she looked at the job, and she said, I want this to be a full-time, uh, the CBDG person to be full-time. So we're back at a point where we don't really know yet what we're doing. And so, and we don't know what town meeting is going to allow us to do. So we really won't know until July 1st. We've had a lot of ideas. I've done a lot of research in surrounding communities about what they do. Um, obviously, in Somerville and Cambridge, that are a little richer than we are, they just have the existing planning, mostly planning staff, do the work. In Cambridge, the Cambridge Historical Commission has a lot of um, staff. They do. A, the historic preservation, they have an affordable housing department, they do the affordable housing, and the, their community development does the open space and recreation. So this is all new for us. You know, we called Belmont, actually Eve called Belmont for us, and to find out what they did, and they have um, a person that says he's a financial planner that's doing the work on a part-time basis. We, we don't know yet because we don't, want to go out and advertise a position that doesn't exist, nor do we have know what money we have. There's, the town has a very hard time getting good part-time help, and there, I know Karen Malloy is concerned about that. We thought we would try to see if there was another CPA administrator we could share. Um, we've looked at what Lexington does and what Concord does. They're, they're, um, Lexington has a lot more money than we, we get f through CPA, even though there are fewer people. Um, so we, it's, it's in process. We don't really know yet what we're doing. We're just incredibly grateful that we've had Eve to help us. Um, and I think the tracking of the construction projects is, is a concern I have. Um, I do, I manage construction projects, so I know what's involved. And I have a very hard time with the idea that Christine Bongiorno, who is head of Health and Human Services, is going to have to be overseeing that construction. Granted, with two more volunteers from the from the um, the Arlington Historical Commission, but you know how we handle that is something that um, I'm concerned about. I don't have any real answers yet. Any guidance would be appreciated. That is, uh there's a new position being recommended in the manager's office. Uh, that might be something to discuss. 
Yes. With the manager. Correct. Are there any other questions? Carolyn? Seventy-four thousand. Okay. Right. So I'm assuming that that money can be paid um, no. out of this. And no. Why is that? It can't be because it's incurred in this fiscal year. We've already, when it was forty-four thousand dollars, David Good came to us right away and said, "Can you pay for this money?" I have a distributed of, um, a memorandum from the Department of Revenue, so we can't pay for the implementation costs of CPA that the town budget incurs. We're sorry, we'd like to, but we can't do it. So just to clarify, there's really two reasons. The, the one of them is that it was the, the wrong fiscal year and we didn't have yeah. access to the money. And the other one is, is through that memorandum that, that you have. Um, that was an su unpleasant surprise to us as well because it, it feels kind of unfair. But yeah. um, but the reason there's a there's a there's a reason and it goes back to the to how they got CPA passed in the first place. There was concern when the law was passed that it would be a, a back door to getting around Prop Two and a Half. So they there's a uh, the no supplanting phrase that we clause in the law that we've all come to know very well. Um, is a fire intended to be a fiscal firewall to prevent you from backfilling what you're already supposed to be doing on the town side. And in this case, it doesn't make sense because it's clearly an expensive employing CPA, but it's kind of a casualty of that firewall built into the statute um, in the way that the money is not permitted to flow. Yet next year we'll have the 2016 money, and so therefore why can't it be spent? Why can't it come out of the administrative cost from that money once we have access to it? It's because of the second reason. Um, that that the no supplanting clause, that the fiscal firewall, that that if it's if it's well, I'm not. Do you have a better way to explain it? Because it's tricky. It, it's very tricky. Um, I did send out, and I can send it to you again. The Department of Revenue, the when the town of Brookline was trying to decide whether to adopt CPA or not, they asked very specific questions, and it's the money administrative money can be used for only the Community Preservation Committee expenses. But it is the expense of the committee because the committee can't do the work without it. Correct. That's yeah. not the way the Department of Revenue looks that. at it. They would, they would look at it and say that it's, it's the town, in this case the treasurer's right. expense. And you know they said that there are other costs <coughs> that may be incurred to implement uh, and adopt CPA. Like that the, it's on the town side of things, as it were. Um, we're not allowed to. And the, the assessor's costs, for instance. Yeah, same thing. So in, in actuality, this is an assessor and a treasurer department cost, and IT is doing the work for them. Correct. Is how the state would look at it. Right. Correct. Okay. Yeah. It, you know, would David you like Good is a good friend, and when he gave, I got that yeah. $44,000 email, yeah. I thought, oh, now what? Do, and, you know, Adam, I. I said, is there any way we can do this? And I was told no. So. Well, I, I represent the yeah, IT yeah. department. So if, if I can pass the buck on to Treasury and Assessors, I will, because they're not my responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd like to help. Maybe if they upgraded the uh, Treasury software, that would help too. Right. Well, there, that's what they're doing. Good. That's good to hear. Other questions? Good job. So, when, when the Community Preservation Act was presented at town meeting in May of 2014, there was a, there, there was a portion of the selectmen's presentation that talked specifically about using CPA in a way that would extend the budgetary life <coughs> of Arlington. And I think they were very proud of that, that section of it, right? And so in order to make the mechanics work, there's, a, there's sort of a balancing act between the projects that would not be part of the ordinary scope of government and the projects that that are. And so the, the, the target to all of it becomes the affordable housing piece. Because once the affordable housing piece goes <coughs> above the state match, you're not extending the budgetary life. You're actually eroding. On using their own model, you're actually eroding, eroding the budgetary worthiness that they 
champion so loudly. Um, so I guess my, my question is, I guess a little bit more open-ended. So with, you know, I think about 400,000, let's say, of, of affordable housing, what was your, the, sort of the committee's thought process about sort of the balancing act in that regard of how much is, you know, if you think of it as, I'm gonna call it expanding the scope of government. What was the thought process in balancing it? Well, first of all, we have to act on projects that come to us. And one of the things about this very truncated year is a lot of the town entities didn't know enough about the CPA to apply. We're hoping that will change next year. And so that the, the ones that really helped out the budget are the park and recreation um, departments, one. The capital planning, um, people were very good. They sent a spreadsheet immediately. Um, Christine Bongiorno was again good. That's a town owned resource. Um, and then the Arlington Housing Authority one came to us. Um, so those three are really helping the town budget. The other two, if you don't include adding to affordable housing as something that will help the town, you could say that that's an extra and the Spy Pond Park one, but we don't see it that way. I mean, we got nine projects that were proposed. We went down to the five um, because of the schedule, who was gonna manage the projects, what the cost, whether the cost <coughs> estimates made sense, who, who was doing the work. And this is, for instance, his historic preservation. That's not a field in Arlington that we have done very well by. Um, so there will be, I would think, and in, in the back of this handout that Eric so nicely put together is a list of all the CPA projects. And you'll see that the longest list is the historic resource list and how many projects there are in that realm that really need attention, um, both town-owned and um, other historic resources like the Jason Russell House and the Old Schwab Mill. Um, these are projects that don't traditionally come into the kind of um, town that we have. But there are, there are projects that, for instance, anything in, that has to do with this beautiful building could certainly be um, dealt with with CPA. Anything that, any exterior um, work on the senior center could come to CPA. There are lots of things that could be done I don't think that necessarily the department heads understand that yet, and that's why I want in the summertime to go and talk to them about what what things CPA can pay for and what they can't pay for. That's something that this committee can be helpful to us as well because you work with department heads is to help to help spread that mm -hmm. word. Don't sell it too much. You have seventeen hundred dollars worth of. Mm. Well, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's nice that's the point of it. Okay, Christine. No, what Adam is doing is keeping track of all the costs. So, for instance, Eve's time is. We don't, we don't have any sense, the town manager doesn't have any sense, to your knowledge, of it, for the fiscal year this is covering. Which should be the much, highest one. No, I don't, we don't know yet because we don't know, we're halfway through the process. Once we get to town meeting, that's another. I mean, Doug Hyam's going to have to spend considerable time. The comptroller's going to have have to spend setting spend time setting up the reserve accounts with us. Um, the treasurer's office is going to have to spend some time. I, <clears throat> you know, Adam is was hopeful that we could pay what was first a forty-four thousand dollar bill, and now gotten to seventy-four thousand um, for the IT work but we, we couldn't do it. I mean, I think what we should be doing is keeping track of these expenses and, and really see how much it's costing the town. Is there, but is there, I guess my question I is, don't is, different. Think is, there, is there, is there, has there been an effort to forecast how much of an uh, impact this will have on, for example, mm -hmm. health, health and human services, that budget, with Christine overseeing that project, how right. much, 
um, Doug Hines' time will be spent and can't be paid through administrators? I think that that is something that Adam has been looking at. I don't think it'll come close to six hundred and um, thirty-six thousand dollars for the Robbins Farm Park, for instance, that is being taken off the standard budget. But I think what we have to do, we have to go through a whole year, because we're just at the beginning. We're gonna have town meeting to go, then we have the oversight of the projects to go. And as Al said, well, we, I, I we have to. There hasn't been a, an effort to forecast what that We have not. We have, I mean. <coughs> for the Woodmore Robbins House, we put in contingency money into the budget and we've included not only an architect's designer, but a uh, historic preservation person to help with the oversight or to take the oversight of the project. Okay, but there hasn't been a effort to forecast, for example, Christine Bunger has been, it is an example, how much of her time. That, this that she'll be a member of the committee, but I think that what, what we'll be able to do is to put you know, most of the responsibility on the designer. And the, the, the piece that she has to, we have to do is from the committee standpoint, and we have to budget for that in the administrative expenses, is to provide the oversight of the construction of that. But I think that you're, what we should try to do is, is do a forecast. Yeah, because I think, <coughs> because not only that, but the, um, I'm concerned about some of the structural problems, not in park and recreation. That's a really solid, is that, right? right. Um, this is the ninth member of our committee, like here. Um, who's very, been very instrumental in um, helping out in all these projects. Where was it? Sorry. Structure. Structure. The, park and, the open space and park and recreation structure is there. I'm not worried about that. The affordable housing structure is there. There is no structure for historic preservation. We do not have a historic preservation plan. There is nobody paid in the town that does anything like that kind of work. Do you know somebody? No. I, I have to, now have to approve it if I'm not going to ask, so oh. that's why I'm waiting. Carol. <laughs> um, um, so if we were, if the person responsible for that project was a consultant and it was related to specific historical projects, could that be paid from the CPA fund? Yes. Yeah. And that's built in the project. Yes, that's that's it's paid. It's going to be paid by the project fund. So could we hire? Could your committee hire a consultant to manage those over time, rather than using? Um, yes. 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 Absolutely. That's what we're trying to do, and that's the reason that the amount of money for the Whittemore Robbins House project went up quite a bit. <coughs> I love Christine Bonjourno. She should not be doing what she has done already, let alone anything more, except to be, you know, she's in charge of the Whittemore Robbins House and how that happened, I don't really know. But um, I have been working with Barbara Thornton and we're going to talk about how to take care of some of our buildings in the, in the civic block. We're, we're going to come up with a proposal that are in many, many jurisdictions and are not getting the kind of care that we now have in our building maintenance department, but not those buildings, so. But could we hire, say, a consultant that will be, yes. you know, that you would consider using over five years or 10 years for that set of law? So, and that they would be responsible for suggesting what you wanted to do them in and then manage all of those projects? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that would be, Traditionally, something that the permanent town building committee would do, but they can't do it right now. They well, just they can't. can't get paid to do it. So it's right. Challenging. Correct. So yes, I mean that's that's why it's been very helpful to have Andrew and myself and Ch and Chuck because we we manage construction projects. We we're used to the, doing this, and and we also know what the skills are that you have to have to do the estimating, the construction oversight, and you know the sort of day to day management, and that. 
that's evolving, and I I want to continue to work with you know the capital planning committee to, to come up with constructive ways of, of bridging this gap. I mean, mine, I think the reason Christine is raising it concern is that every year that you do a project, the, some of us will be fighting over where's that money going to come from. Right. Because what I'm about to do after this meeting is to talk to Sandy and Rich about dividing that money between assessors and treasurer. Mm -hmm. So now assessors and treasurer budgets are going to say, what do you mean you want to take out X number of dollars from our budget for this year? Right. Um, and that's, I see that happening over and over again if we don't come up with something. Yeah, and I, I really appreciate if you feel that you have a cost that's directly related to CPA, <coughs> if you would forward it to us so we can keep track of it. I know um, Eve has been keeping track of her hours in the first couple of um, months. It was only 25 hours a month. This last month is 40 plus, so you know, 10 hours a week. We just don't know in terms of management of the construction and the money management, there are two, two aspects. There's the construction management and there's the money management. It has to be, both have to be done. If I could just quick, quickly say, I think, to the, in large part, um, some of these costs are going to be much greater startup costs for the first year, especially with the comptroller establishing the funds. And, and unfortunately, with the, with the collection system and due to the software you know, stuff, you know, that is what it is, but that's not going to be every year. I think to the second point has been mentioned, but just to reinforce that whenever possible, we will require that project budgets include as much coverage that comes out of CPA you know, for, for management. Uh, I do think it's a really good suggestion, a really good question, though, to, to make sure that when we do, when we account for what the costs and the benefits are, that we do consider and maybe even ask town applicants to estimate the, the hours that they will spend um, on this because I think it's a fair question to ask when you're looking at costs and benefits. And that can be part of our application process when we have a full year to do it instead of four months, <laughs> uh, which we, we just couldn't And, do and I think year. one of the things that Kathy would say, she is, and I'm not letting her speak, but she spent, as did Joanne Robinson, unbelievable amounts of time putting the proposals together. And, you know, is that really part of the Conservation Commission or Historical Commission's <coughs> work? No, it isn't. So, and we're going to keep track of our hours as well, so that we, we have, there are a lot of people that are putting a lot of hours in and not getting paid for them, and I, I'd like to know any town side costs that you see, so we can keep track of it. There's, I mean, a, there's, we have a wonderful tracking um, spreadsheet that I'm going to be using, and I think it's, it's you know, we should, we should keep track of that. And, and I was going to say that um, we did put in money for Corey Beckwith to, because we're going to have a lot of public meetings, so that's part of it. There is a small amount of extra eight hours for her for four weeks. But I know I'm going to be, as she said, involved so that I can get an idea if we come forward with another project and something more that the commission started to do going after grants and things like that. We don't know how to estimate these kind of hours, and so and Corey's have time, so we could include a few hours for her, but she doesn't have the construction. No, she couldn't. She <coughs> try. Yes, I'd like to make a comment. I think I don't think we should get too wrapped up in uh, tracking hours of people inside the town, um, and I understand your concern about the uh, the subject, Christine, but. It costs money to spend money, and um, if you think about, for example, in, in the capital plan, when uh, the $630,000, 636000 dollars that uh, is going to be spent on the on the Robbins Farm, uh, the Parks and Recreation Commission has to spend some money to monitor that project. You don't have to do some work to spend that money. And just like they're doing it down at uh, Thorn is it Thorndike? Magnolia. Magnolia, yeah. For a previously approved project. So I think within the, when, when we should just, this, this is just, to the, town, to the town entity itself, this is tax money that is being spent by the town when, when, when it goes to recreation or it goes to other town, town organizations. And, and those departments are going to have to spend some money to, to get that done, just like the fire chief spends money when he goes out to buy a fire truck and then has to 
manage the vendor. The risk here, which is where they, I think the CPA committee needs to focus their reserve funds, is on the non-town entities because that's taxpayer money that's not being spent by the town. It's being, it's being spent for projects that are approved by the CPA law, but they're not, they don't necessarily have an inherent management structure that, that knows how to control the spending of those funds. And, and that's where I think, I predict that the CPA committee is gonna to have to spend money to monitor and manage those projects. And I think, you know, uh, that's why I think with somebody new coming on board in the manager's department, this is the time to negotiate with the town manager to get a piece of it because it's a new person. And, you know, yep. whether it's 5% or 10%, you, you can hash that out. But that has a direct tie into the management of the town. So, Correct. just a suggestion. I, I, I actually, Adam and I have been talking about it for months. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, it's, it's, you know, Let's not get too much into minutia. Uh, we, you know, we've got the basic projects before us, just like we do with the capital plan. Are there any other questions on the basic projects? Paul? If I could go back to the Drake Village window replacement. Just, uh, I'm afraid this is minutia, Cal, but. Um. <laughs> well, I, I don't mean, you know, the projects themselves are what we're really approving, per se. Um, it says that the project will leverage $200,000 of CPA funding and $150,000 of CDBG to get $1.4 million from the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, but then it says it's $1 for every 30 cents of local funding. And if you take the $350,000 of local funding and multiply it out by Ten a dollar for every thirty cents, you get one point one seven million, not one point four million. The the numbers have been changing, and it was <laughs> actually it's a little deceiving because this is I believe maybe the third year of CBDG for this project. Is that right? Yeah. So it's we 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 we're. we're um, can we get back to you on the exact amount? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions on the uh, on the projects or on the, the CPA process so far? Peter? This is a quick question. Uh, could you possibly send me a copy of this for our minutes? Okay. Yes. Okay, any other questions? Um, I think that uh, for a first year, you've done great. I think it's, this is well put together. Uh, I think it has a great deal of information. And uh, when I talked to you a month ago, I wasn't sure. We weren't either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was a very good consultant that we had on Monday night yeah. who um, helped us tremendously. Okay. I think. <laughs> Charlie. <Okay. laughs> well, uh, I, I think. Uh, like I said, the presentation was well done. I know you're making it through. Uh, if, if, if next year you make this presentation about two or three weeks earlier, then it will be more. We're planning to do months earlier. Months earlier. We want to be on the normal budget site. Okay. We don't want to do this again. Yeah, okay. Well, again, <laughs> exactly. thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. Okay, I think our um, job, I guess because we're doing this for the first time too, is to, uh, uh, the, the recommendation that's going to be before town meeting is the recommendation of the CPA committee. Um, our job is to, to hurry to hear it, what we did today, uh, and then uh, we can also make a recommendation of support. Um, or change it, or whatever, whatever else we do. Uh, um, I, I'm not sure we have to make a recommendation, but I think town meeting would probably appreciate uh, what we think. So, uh, 
I'm over here. Okay, I'm sorry, no. He spoke just a second before you put your hand up. <laughs> Peter. I move, I move we uh, um, recommend a uh, support of the, of the uh, CPC. Okay. Is there a second to that motion and support? Okay. Uh, so Peter recommends Charlie seconds. Discussion. Paul? So just going back to their slide where they say what town meeting can do, and they list these four things. So we as a committee can recommend one of these four things. If right. It's so. so we could recommend. This is always an important thing to do. Page, page, have page numbers. Okay. I, I get them. Okay, town meeting. So we can support, we can move that they reject or reduce. Um, so, motion has been made and seconded to support discussion. Dean? Are we talking about supporting or not supporting in its entirety, or are we talking about? matching our support or lack thereof with the votes. Because I believe, I don't think we vote all five of them. I think they have, we have to vote one. I not mean we have to vote each one separately. Each of the projects. Right. So but I, I think, uh, well, I, tell me, Peter, if I'm wrong, I think the motion was to support the recommendations of the CPA, which would mean all of the projects they're recommending. Right. And I'd like to suggest that that we're, we're not in a very good position to be more specific than that, having heard this for the first time tonight. I, I agree with that. This is all new for me and for many, many other people too. And it's hard to uh, s sort of bounce it off experience when there really isn't uh, a history. Charlie? So um, this is probably the last time that I'm gonna remind people of this, but um, I was uh, publicly and vociferously against this act when <coughs> this, this uh, referendum, when it when went before the public. And I was also uh, opposed to it um, the most recent time, it was before town meeting, and uh, about five or six years before that. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, the citizens voted for it, and it's now law, and the town collects tax funds for it every year that have to be um, spent uh, wisely and judiciously, um, just the way the other town departments and other town functions spend money. And I think, uh, you know, I, sp I spent some time reviewing this uh, over this last capital planning cycle, and I spent some time uh, last Monday night and prior to that talking to uh, Clarissa about the project, projects. And um, there, there are things that are pretty familiar here and there are things that are not familiar. I mean, um, you asked the question earlier tonight, Dean, if, the, if this was, what was this doing for our uh, financial condition, our financial budget, as was represented by the selectmen um, during the, their campaign? Um, I don't know if, it, if it's actually happened the way the selectmen envisioned it, but um, the fact that, that the Capital Planning Committee moved out of its budget about six or seven parks and recreation projects and sort of pushed them over the fence towards CPA in, in the five-year plan has substantially improved the ability of uh, the town to finance the Stratton School. Well, I mean, and it's funny, Charlie, because I thought I gave them like the ultimate softball question you did. when I asked that. You did. <laughs> I and, did. And, 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 and <laughs> I was how, I thought that was easy because we talked about this yeah. exact thing and yeah. they just kinda of Yeah. But but nonetheless I'm just saying that it, it did um, improve the you know the, the fiscal position of the town. Not necessarily in the way people foresaw at that time, but it, it, it has enabled the uh, Stratton project to, to go forward. Um, Going through these projects, you know, f first of all, um, I'm convinced that the five projects that they have presented do qualify for the 
uh, CPA funds. They fall in the right categories that, you know, they, they check all little boxes off. Um, one of the things that I personally can't get my head around, and, um, you know, that may just be a deficiency on my part, um, is the, you know, this, there's a lot of subjectivity here, for example. It's, it's pretty straightforward to be objective about affordable housing because you can see it, you know somebody's going to benefit from it, et cetera. But historical preservation is a little bit like art, you know, it's very subjective. And so, um, you know, is that $289,000 on the carriage house, is that the best uh, use of taxpayers' money? It, you know, absolutely in my mind it's not. But inside the envelope of the CPA law and what these funds should be used for, it's legitimate purpose. So, you know, the reason why I seconded Peter's motion and, and why I think that the Finance Committee should uh, support this is because, um, number one, it, it's, it's, it's the, the state law and now town law. Number two, the taxpayer's money is now in a box somewhere, you know, that has to be spent on these things. And number three, I think that these people did a reasonably good job in s selecting and vetting the projects and, and lining them up. And I also think um, that $77,000 uh, reserve is a, is a good move. To, I'm talking about the, uh, what do they call it, the uh, administrative reserve. I mean, the fact of the matter is, any, some of these projects that are not administered directly by people inside the town that are it's sort of in private organizations could easily go awry and, and you know, cost more money or they would have to spend money to, to manage it. So I, 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 over, overall, I think they've, it's, a, it's a reasonable job considering it's the first time out the gate. I'd like to add um, to that. Um, in my mind, we should be treating the CPA a bit like we treat the capital budget committee. In other words, capital budget committee starts their work in September, works all through it. They come before us, they present their projects. And I don't think it's our job necessarily to say and look at each individual job and project and say, well, I think I'd do this differently or I'd substitute something three years out for something the first year. Um, that's what they've spent their time on. And I think that's what the CPA committee has spent their time on. I think our job is to say, uh, is it reasonable? You know, are their recommendations reasonable within the law? Uh, do they conform to that? And uh, if we decide that yes, they're within the law and they're reasonable, uh, and that the committee has done its due diligence, then uh, I, I think we should support them. And uh, just the way we've supported the uh, Capital Budget Committee over the last 25 years with one exception. Um, 29 years. Yeah, 29 years with one exception. And before town meeting, they won, we lost. Al? This is sort of a process question between capital planning and, and uh, community preservation. <coughs> but I, I think for 29 years, we've appropriated 5% to the capital plan. Or yes. Maybe the last 20 years. Uh, no, how, actually, for a number of years, it was less than 5%. OK, well, but in recent years, it's yeah. been 5%. And, and I've, I've heard someone go all over the state saying 5% is a good number to start with. Um, uh, in the uh, capital plan, there, there are always calculations that show five, the 5% 5 bottom line. Uh, just for clarification, the, the projects for town-owned property that have been pushed over the fence, how does that factor into the 5% calculation? <coughs> They're um, saying it's, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars It doesn't change it. It, it, does the 5% include these which would have been in the capital plan or not? No, 5% is, it's just 5% of the budget. These are, this is, and, and for the capital. Let, me put it, let me put it this way. The 5% is a, is a net spending against the non-exempt budget, okay? This is an exempt budget. Okay. So this is like, this budget is, it, it's like um, we just, the town decides to do a debt exclusion for the middle school. So that moves out of the capital budget into some other category. So that's, the approach that we've taken is that projects that are CPA eligible should be considered by CPA. 
okay. and projects that are not we consider. But so in terms of the capital plan, it's, made, it, it's, it's thought of sort of like a, a debt exclusion for a particular capital project. Um, yeah, it's, it's just an, it's an exempt spending category. Yeah. The voters moved a certain class of things from non-exempt to exempt. So, so the effect is actually spending more dollars on, on capital projects. Yeah, one and a half million a year. Right. Well, not, not quite because- Well, but on the, the town owned ones, you know, eight, 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 That's right. Okay. Okay, is there any further discussion? I, I, Christine? I'm not sure I agree with you that this, we should look at this as all one pot of money. I am concerned for the example that you say about um, the caratels. That may not be a choice that the town taxpayers would have said this, this is worthy of us spending our tax dollars this year. But it does fall within the CPA uh, realm and I think it is a reasonable use of that money. Um, based on what I've heard tonight, I'm, I feel comfortable supporting what they recommend, but I do think it is part of our job to make sure that the town budget isn't detrimentally affected because of what we're, the, what the CPA is doing. I, I, I don't, I disagree that we should just view it as all one, one budget. I think we should evaluate these projects to the extent we can, to the extent we have any vote voice in, in terms of how is this going to uh, burden our ongoing operating. I, I, I agree with you. Uh, well, the point that I was trying to make, especially with respect to the, as an example, the uh, Robbins Farm Project, is that if we funded that at a capital committee, they would still have a bunch of administrative, ex Parks and Recreation would have a, 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 some amount of administrative expense to do that project that doesn't show up in the $636,000. That, that's, that was my point. And, and actually ask them, ask them to track that is putting an extra burden on the department. You know, if they have a, that, which I'm not sure is what we want to do. I think it may be reasonable for us to ask them and to ask ourselves, are these particular projects next year and the year after and the year after, if we, if we support them, are we creating a, an added cost to the town budget, the non-CPA budget? Yeah. And I think it's fair for us to either support or not support those future projects based on, among other criteria, that. That's, that's the, okay. the well, only point. I, that's an opinion. I mean, I, I can't say it's not a good opinion. It's, it's an opinion. I'm not sure I agree with it 100%, but it's reasonable. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, some of these things, uh, uh, you know, will be start up and not, not be onerous continuing expenses. Uh, further discussion? Carolyn, did I see your hand go up again? So when we do That's okay, that's your job. Um, when we do capital projects that take um, work by the town to, and, and or resources by the town to manage them, where does that money come out? Is that still part of their operating budget? They're sort of stuck with that? Yes, yes it, can I answer that? Yeah. Yeah, yes, it, yes, it does. Um, you know, for example, if, the, uh, if you look back at the building of the firehouse, the permanent town building committee which includes a dozen department managers and, and people in the town as well as volunteers, along with the fire chief and people in his department, we're managing that project just de facto. When they go out and buy a new pumper, they spend money. Uh, the school, you know, the school department wants to build X new schools, so that involves the school administration, involves the finance committee, it involves the town manager. Uh, the purchasing agent and the permanent town building committee. So there's a there's an infrastructure there that um, does in the operating budget that does all of this work that um, comes along with spending that money. And if if they need additional professional services like architects or, for example, OPMs, uh, which is um, owner's project manager for a building project, 
that's built into the cost of the project. But the capital budget is part of the town budget. It's just we, we, we take the town budget and we take 5% for capital projects. And as you say, there may be a spillover of, of additional 5%. But I see the CPA as over and above in a separate category that can only be used for certain expenses. And I'm concerned that using, that deciding on those special projects, that there may be a spillover onto the, 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 the normal town budget. Which is part of the reason I was making the recommendation that with a new employee coming on board that they help uh, pay for that. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Carol? So the capital campaign never reimburses any of the departments for their involvement in that process? No. No. Okay. no, but the capital budget pays capital. for any additional professional services they have to retain to do a project. Okay. It's similar to what they're doing. Similar to what they're doing. Okay. okay, is there any other discussion? Peter? Uh, one other comment. Uh, one, one of the reasons I at least uh, have a, lot, a fair amount of faith in the Capital Planning Commission is because of the committee, I mean, is because of the uh, uh, people that are on it. Uh, I think you, most of you would agree that they're, they're good people, except maybe the chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I take that back. But anyway, of the, I know a fair number of the people that are on the CPAC, and, and they're good people. We always have to keep the fire to their feet to, anyway. Right. Okay, Carol? In addition to that, Kathy um, Burnett is not just a landscape architect. She worked for the Department of Conservation and Recreation for 25 years as a project manager. And if you drive along 93 by the um, gas tanks and you see all of that parkland down to the ocean, that's because of her. That's one of the projects she did. If you bike on the bike path out in Western Massachusetts, that's because of her. So she's not just a landscape architect. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, the motions are made and seconded to support the recommendations uh, of the uh, uh, CPA committee to town meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, unanimous. 330-16. Okay, now I've got a few other things to do. Uh, first of all, is there anybody who really likes to get into uh, GIS and likes to read about all this technical stuff? Anybody? Okay. Okay. Secondly, I passed out um, a piece with a lot of little drawings on it. <clears throat> so, since everything is really getting tight over the next month, as far as several major projects. I thought what I'd do is, we, uh, this is on the uh, School Enrollment Task Force. We met last night, and we heard a preliminary report from the uh, architect, uh, who really did a nice job. And they proposed two options to the Odyssey. Two options to the Odyssey. So the first one is, uh, look at this one that has the, uh, the existing school there. Yeah. Uh, with Appleton down the bottom. So that's Appleton is towards Mass Ave. So the, the second recommendation, option two, was back in the parking lot, back where the field is. The uh, enrollment task force unanimously decided to reject that option and focus on this option, option one, which is in the front. So if you look at it from there, that's, there's a small field there, um, right on Appleton Street in front of the school. Uh, it was built up a little bit, you know, right out, off the sidewalk. It's not a very big field, but there. Yeah. So that's where option one would put the addition. It's inside the dotted line. Right? Inside the dotted line. So you can see uh, the dotted lines right in there. And then there's two connections to the existing building with the more dotted lines. Okay, so that's where it would be. Um, and then if you go 
on the other side. This is looking at it you know, from the side. And so originally, one of the problems was you've got to be able to connect this addition to the current building, the existing structure there. And so it was going to be a 24 foot high space, which was going to be parking, and then two classroom floors. Um, with basically, it's basically a classroom structure. After a lot of discussion, the uh, enrollment task force recommended unanimously, and I think the architect accepted, that to move, to, to knock off that top floor, where it's all X'd out, and instead put them underneath there, where it says CR and CR written in. And so instead of a 24 foot lift to get up there, it would be like a 10 to 14 foot space. And then he'd have a classroom four, and then a classroom four that would connect into the existing. Now, what that does is underneath the proposal was parking. Uh, the superintendent made a position that if we're having more students there, we're going to have more faculty, we're going to have more parking. So that seems reasonable. And 10 to 14 feet should be more than enough I mean, 10 feet is my trailer that I tow around. Uh, so that should be more than enough for cars. And then in addition, there was some discussion of only making half of that underneath there for parking, and maybe the other half into some kind of more common space. Now, uh, the superintendent said that they basically solved the problem of the cafeteria, because by knocking down a wall or two within the present cafeteria, and the adjoining spaces, they could expand the cafeteria into a bigger space. So that just leaves the problem of maybe gym and library uh, for, for common, more common space. And so the architect's gonna look into that using half of that sort of ground floor into some kind of other space. So this is the option they're looking at. The architect is now planning on and obviously they have to, there's no cost estimates yet on anything. So the Odyssey option that they're looking at will be this revised thing uh, with the two floors of classrooms and the bottom four could be half parking and half common space. They still have to work that out. Uh, the advantage would be they don't have to have so much structure, you know, 24 feet of structure to float this, they only need 10 or 14 feet of structure to support the two. The other point, the advantage to this, I think, would be that the poor people across this Appleton Street wouldn't have to look at you know these, this huge wall. It would be a, a shorter, I mean, it'd still be big, but at least it wouldn't be quite so high. So that's the option they're looking at now for the Audison option. The other option still on the table is the Gibbs. And, uh, and that would basically be a, a, a renovation of the Gibbs. They would, uh, the, the only real um, thing they're looking at is where there used to be lockers to, for, um, down underneath the gym. Probably most of you have seen the gym. Underneath used to be locker rooms. Well, apparently kids don't use locker rooms anymore. Uh, they don't take showers. Uh, it's just whole different, at least than when I was going to junior high. Uh, and underneath there, they're going to put a cafeteria. Underneath the gym will be a cafeteria area uh, and a kitchen. Um, so other than that, it's pretty much, you know, the, uh, the next floor is all classrooms, the third floor is all classrooms, uh, and, and that will be the option. So it will be putting an addition, like this option one on the Odyssey, and it will be renovating the Gibbs School. So, you know, th that's what we're going to be looking at. Now, there's two, if you can please put down the following dates. Um, April 28th, the uh, architect will be making the final presentation with everything. You know, what they're going to do on this, on the Audison option and the Gibbs option before the enrollment task force. It will be in the, in the auditorium, the town hall auditorium. 
So this is one I really recommend that you go to. Because uh, you're going to hear all the same stuff that the enrollment task force is going to see. We've got cost estimates, um, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, hopefully the report will be available like probably by the Monday before that, so everybody will have a chance to read it. Um, and it, it, it will be interesting to see. Uh, depending, I mean, if you have, um, uh, you know, if one comes in at 20 and the other comes in at 30, you know, it's not necessarily an a, a easy choice uh, because obviously taking the Gibbs out of what it does and moving it back into a school has certain operational costs increase over the addition. And also it has costs from the rent that we get and obviously the removal of all those tenants. So there's, there's different things to balance. Um, and then on May 2nd, I think that's the following Monday, May 2nd at seven o'clock, uh, there'll be another meeting of the school enrollment task force, uh, hopefully to vote. Um, I, I don't remember where they said that was going to be. Uh, yeah, May 2nd, 7 o'clock. Well, it'll probably be here um, because it'll be before town meeting. Uh, so again, everything's moving very quickly. So um, I recommend you come to both the, uh, May tw the April 28th meeting and the May 2nd meeting. Um, and as soon as that information is out, I'll make sure it gets to everybody here too. Ooh, what about okay. Thompson? I'm sorry? What about Thompson? Uh, this is all we're focusing on now. Um, I think Thompson is the school department issue right now. Uh, but all the enrollment task force is focusing on is the middle school on that. Uh, Charlie, want to add something? I did. I, you know, I think that a lot of this conversation took place last night after uh, Adam and Joe Coral left, you know, and they had a, a question and answer period. But it seemed to me that the, I, I, I ran into two concerns with the architect. One is that they seem to be focusing again on this uh, 280 <coughs> square foot, $290 per square foot renovation cost and $400 per square foot <coughs> cost to build new. And, and I thought that this study uh, <coughs> was gonna be a departure from that simplistic approach and they were gonna actually get into what the real uh, costs were, and uh, and I hope that they don't just come back, you know, with this conceptual design and then start to add those numbers, because I recall in the, um, the rebuilding of the elementary schools with at least three of those schools, right, um, Brackett and uh, Thompson, Pierce, um, they determined that it was less expensive to build new than to renovate. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd hate to see them come back and just give us this uh, $400 per square foot and $280 per square foot analysis and, and then downstream wind up with a huge uh, renovation cost at the Gibbs. Um, I hope so too. I'm, I'm looking for some real numbers. I think they had a, a cost estimator involved in this. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking for the same thing. I'm looking for as solid numbers as you can do at this point before you actually develop the final specs and go out to bid. Um, any other questions, uh, Carolyn? So would Gibbs, then, would Gibbs then be all eighth graders or would Gibbs be a little bit of six, uh, six seventh, and eighth graders? I, I think uh, that'll have to be determined by the school committee. Um, and I think she was at first thinking that she'd do sixth grades at the Gibbs and seventh and eighth grades at the Audison um, for some pedagogical reasons. Um, so they keep everybody in the same rather than have it with two separate schools. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, the, 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 the classrooms are going to be there, the, the furniture is all going to be the same. It was sort of beyond the scope of, of, I think, the enrollment task force. That's a, a superintendent and school committee decision. Do we bus all the sixth graders up to Audison? I'm sorry? Do we bus the distant sixth graders to Audison, or do they all walk or take the MBTA? Does all of, all of the above. Well, I, I think, uh, yeah. 
take the MBTA. Oh, they will often take the MBTA or their parents' driving no, license. There, there are a lot of, we don't a lot pay of cars. For public, we don't pay for busing for, for the sixth graders. I don't believe it. Yes, we do. I think we have. Yeah, we're too, they're too far yeah, away. Smaller, okay, now we, we pay for busing for the Bishop kids from. No, they pay for it. They pay for it. Parents do. Oh, the parents pay for that. There is, <coughs> there is a sixth grade bus that goes down to East Allington. There's options. You can either ride that bus, you can, parents can take you, or you can ride the MBTA. Okay. So are we going to increase our busing costs by moving all sixth graders to Gibbs? I mean, that's just another additional no, cost. Because if you, if, if you think about it conceptually, um, even though we always refer to the Gibbs mm -hmm. as an East Arlington school, it's more towards the middle of town than the Odyssey Middle School is. Yeah. And so when they've, when they've talked about busing before, I think they have this, they have this weird um, model of like two miles, depending on how someone walks, flies, skips. I don't really understand it. Um, but what I, when you start to realize when you look at the map, is the Gibbs is more to the center of town than the Odyssey. So to get to that two mile, um, to get to that, that, that stretch of two miles at the Gibbs is more difficult than it is to get there in the Odyssey. With the Odyssey right now, I believe you hit that two mile mark when you get like to a sm relatively small sliver of East Arlington. It's about Lake Street. Past that, actually. Mm -hmm. You really have to get down there. But I think on, um, on like I said, on this, I think it would actually, could actually decrease the busing okay. for that, for the overall area. I did ask again, the, the superintendent did give us some operating costs um, for the Audison, for, for staying at the Audison versus the Gibbs. Um, and I asked her to sort of look over those numbers again, because the school budget's gonna have to absorb that. Um, so I, we've asked for those numbers as part of this whole decision-making process. And uh, like I said, as soon as we get stuff, we'll, we'll send it out to people. Um, because things are sort of going one right after the other. Okay, so, uh, oh, okay. It's coming. I just uh, it's coming. I thought I remarked that uh, you probably don't know how talented the chairman is. He's an amateur architect in his spare time because this uh, idea of the lowering the building down sort of came out in real time last night by uh, Chairman Tosti. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you have something very much like this at your house. <laughs> okay, and the, um, now we still have to go back to you, so hopefully you have a number for us. Uh, we have a reserve fund transfer request, uh, which should be before you. I only gave you the first page. I'll sort of, um, this is dealing with the cost of CPA. I made uh, 10 copies of all pages if anyone wants. Um, so this is a, basically um, the IT was updating this work because the present collection program software that the Treasury uses apparently did not take the CPA. They, it had to be redone. Um, and so the IT has been having a consultant come in uh, to basically do the software for that. And since um, he's been, since July, basically spending any place from uh, three to $10,000 a month. He's been paid through November, but then the IT ran out of money. Um, and so they have requested uh, a reserve fund transfer request of $24,600 to pay him up through the current time um, on it. So uh, it's a bill they really, you know, wanted to get out of the CPA, but the statute just doesn't allow it. Um, and um, it had to be done to collect the money. Like sometimes you have to uh, spend money to make money. Um, and, the, and the guy's been without being paid now for, for a bunch of months. So I think uh, that's the reason they're requesting uh, 24,600. Uh, and uh, I think that was it. Um, a reserve fund transfer of twenty-four thousand six hundred. So moved. Seconded. Seconded. Okay. Moved and seconded. Mm. Any discussion? Dean. So I, I I support this. 
But the one thing I, I, I will say is I think we, just, just sort of, I guess, a, I call, I'll call it a, a brief history lesson. I think this is like the third time we've appropriated money to deal with an issue related to this collection software, which is the reason we're getting rid of this collection software. <laughs> um, I think the last time we appropriated money was when we changed the water billing rates because the system couldn't deal with the water billing rates. And, and the reason I bring this up is I feel like the, well, the, the CPA folks are, are kind of getting, I guess, sort of beat up a little over this, but you know, the, the root cause of the problem is not the CPA. The root cause of the problem is the software, which we've all agreed needs to go away, and we're working to get rid of as quickly as we can. So I, I think it's just important to note that it's really not their issue. It's the, so it's the software's issue. Okay, thank you, Dean. Any other questions or discussion? Carolyn. Is there enough in the treasurer's budget to cover this? Because he tends to um, be giving cash back every year. Um, Rather than taking it out of the reserve fund? Well, I don't know. Who's bu whose budget is the treasurer's budget? <laughs> Yours. <laughs> I'm not sure. Do you have a spare 24000 <laughs> well, have, let, let's You have to this. ask him. I mean, I'm This I, is only... To go up to March. Yeah, there's yeah. another there's another twenty six uh thirty thousand no, right. no, yeah, there's another twenty well twenty thousand estimated yeah. potential. Yeah. So um if, if if there's more money in the treasurer's budget, I'm sure Brian will follow, find it and we could use that money to pay okay. for the, re the rest estimate. of it. Take okay. it from the assessor. And maybe uh, <laughs> transfer this to the Poor guys and explain it to his wife why he can't take them out to dinner. <laughs> okay, any other discussion? Okay, motion motion's been made and seconded uh, for twenty four thousand six hundred from the reserve fund uh, to the uh, the account that's on the sheet. Okay, all those in favor please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The number present and voting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's seven, eight. Yeah, there's seven, eight. There's four, six, seven, eight. 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 Seven,
And, and what is the correct health insurance number? Al, that number is less than what we voted on Monday. Not by more. 12 Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. By 12 -27. Oh, you're right. By 12 -27. Okay, so 19 million, 974, 341, whatever's the difference is the surplus. What is, what is the health number? Uh, individually, uh, because it's split in half, it's 287-801. Okay, I just want total. Collectively, 575-602. 575-602. Okay, so is that your recommendation? The health insurance, 575-602. Total expenses, 19974-341. Uh, and then a small surplus of, what is the surplus? Well, the difference, the change from 1227, but uh, the amount changed $1,200 to 1226. Was okay. A lot of money. Well, I, I also have a number for the uh, enterprise fund, though, from the controller. I'm sorry? Also have the enterprise fund number. The fund balance. balance. As of 630, uh, 2015. You had asked for the balance in the water. water oh, the, the, the surplus. Okay, yeah, the retained. Yeah. Yes? 8 million, 546, 621. That's a lot. Yeah. 8,546,621 is the uh, fund balance. Yeah. Wow. I presume they'll be reducing the water rates. I, uh, I actually pinged, uh, pinged Richard back and said, is that the right number? That's a little higher than uh, everyone else estimated, but I have not right. anything back. Yeah. Now, under the revenues, are we, I'm sorry, somebody said, are we using some retained earnings? But we, we, yeah, we are using retained earnings, so we could either uh, use this to have a $1,200 surplus or reduce the retained earnings. Why don't you reduce the retained earnings okay. so it comes out zero again? So the vote would be the same number for expenses and revenue. Because all that would happen is that it would go back into retained earnings, right. so we might as well not take it out in the first place. Yep. Okay, so you're making a motion. The health insurance changes uh, from 576-828 to 575-602. The expenses are now 19,974,341. We will drop the revenues to 19,974,341 and, uh, and drop the use of retained earnings by the balance. Is that your motion? That's my motion. Second. Second. Okay. Any questions? Okay. All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. 330, 16. <laughs> <laughs> we have, uh... Okay. I think. <laughs> 942, so you get an extra 17 minutes, 18 minutes, 16 minutes. Um, okay, is there any other business before the committee? Okay, so uh, there'll be no meetings next week. Uh, the, uh, and the following Monday after that, the next meeting will be April 13th. We'll be uh, looking at the Discuss Minuteman, so I guess, you know, discuss it, talk about it, talk with others, see what you think. Um, and hope we'll have a recommendation, hopefully, from the uh, uh, Minuteman Task Force. And so uh, we'll be finally balancing everything. Please go through your budgets. Make sure they match with what you understand it. Give any changes to Alan. Look through the footnotes and all. Sometimes footnotes get carried from year to year, even though they're no longer relevant. Um, if you have any comments on the <coughs> word part of the document, uh, you know, please get back to me. Uh, send me an email. Uh, send me an email uh, with any changes, suggestions, questions. I want to send this out tomorrow. The Word document uh, to the uh, um, to the people who review it. You know, the moderator and the town council and controller. Alan, you'll probably be you know sending them out. Well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make all these last changes and send them out. You know, the next couple of days. Okay. Uh, I also, I haven't done the, all the reconciliation with the long range plan and adding up the offsets. Right. So, the next two weeks, we really got to pull everything together. I really would like to send out the Finance Committee report as we did last year with the Selectman and the uh, um, Redevelopment Board report. To do that, I have to, we have to finish on the 13th, and I've got to have it um, 
And actually, it's going to be interesting. I'm not even sure we can. But it's literally got to be to the printer at 8 o'clock the next morning. So if we can do it, fine. If we can't, but I'd like to try. When do you do the uh, Article 56, the stabilization fund? We'll do that on the 13th. 13th. Yeah. That's basically, that, that just balances out everything. Yeah. Um, and we still have... Uh, you know, we still have to find out if there's anything left with the in the special town meeting. There's a couple articles we'll probably have to deal with. Um, uh, hopefully not. We'll probably have to deal with those. Okay. Any other questions? Meeting adjourned. Thank you for all of you for all your good work. Mm -hmm.